believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I, I believe that he, that Galilean prophet, is the Messiah. I've been, well, I can see the bishop raised up in the district presbyter and all the dignity and saying, Watch your eyes. My, you don't mean you've gone like Luke and the rest of them did. Yes, I believe him. I certainly do. Why, why, why he had a need. God's got a way of putting it on you in such a way he'll make you come out with that faith. Just bring it right out anyhow. Yes, sir. Now, I could hear him say, uh, does anybody know where he's at? One little fellow said, yes. Uh, I, I was sick the other day and I, I went on to see Dr. Luke and Luke's with him and he, he was over in Gadaria and they, I heard by a courier that they're coming in today. They're supposed to land this morning down there at the fishing dock. I can see a little uh, dry going out and get his little priest hat and putting it on, putting his coat on. Start out, I hear the district presbyter stand at the door and say, look here, young man. Uh, you've been one of us for a long time. Now, if you're going to start such as that and mix up our congregation, <laughs> bring such fanaticism as that in our group, you know what's going to happen? We're going to excommunicate you. We're going to take your name right off the boat. That's all. Well, I can hear his little heart sinking like that. He looked around his wife, and she's standing, seeing what he's going to say, and look over and see his little dying daughter. He said, you just might as well take her off, because here I go. That's right. I'm on my road. He had a need. Rushing. He must go right now. They said, remember, if you go, you know what's going to happen. You know our declaration. Yes, I understand all about it. But I've got a dying child here. And the very thing that I've hid in my heart all the time, I've searched the Scriptures, I've tended his meeting under disguisement, and I've checked the Scriptures, and he is the Messiah. Amen. Amen. That's it. Amen. That's the way. Ah, now you're coming to a dry Turn right out and tell him what's right. Confess your faith. Then you're getting your right on the right path. Then it, it, it isn't kind of gloomy looking. Oh, uh, he said, the church said, now you remember, if you do, well, what's going to happen? But... Jairus had a need. The need. And brother, if there ever was a time, brother, that we ought to make our confession that he is the Messiah, the Son of God, that he is alive, that it is power in just the same there's a need today. Today is the hour. People are dying. People are dying in the churches. People are, the Pentecostal church is dying. It's going so far, Lord. It's getting out away from God. If there's any time to step out and say, we are dying, let's get back to God. It's right now because there's a need. Come back to the faith that was once delivered to the saints. I know there's a lot of fanaticism. I'll realize that. As I said at the ministerial breakfast the other morning, you can't hardly blame pastors. But remember, every time you see something false, a bogus dollar, it's just as sure as anything in the world. It's made off of a real one. I never was so surprised. One time I was going up the road and I seen a, a, a big bunch of crows or blackbirds. They were just having their office squalling time. I thought, what's the matter with them? I walked on up the road and there's some of them was in trees and some on telegraph poles and some sitting on fences. I thought, what's the matter with the birds? There was a, a strawberry patch across the, the field. And the man that owned the patch had went to Florida for a vacation, and he just let those strawberries there. He wouldn't let no one pick them because he, he, liked to see, he kept them there for the birds. He just loved to watch the birds. And so while he was gone down to Florida on a vacation, while well, somebody came over and put a big old scarecrow up in the field and wanted to pick the strawberries themselves, not let the birds have them. The birds was all excited. Oh, my, they were so excited. Some of them sitting way off in a tree, looking off over there on them scarecrows and and just this chirping and chirping and going on. Some sitting down on the telegraph poles and some sitting on the fence poles. And I thought, well, now, I wonder what's the matter. And I happened to look sitting right on the arms of those, that old scarecrow said, two big healthy birds just eating as hard as they could eat. <laughs> well, I thought, if that isn't a picture, if that isn't something. Now I thought, well, what's the matter? I walked up a little close and I looked. There's plenty of strawberries. I thought, what's the matter, fellas? And that's the way some of them do. Some of them are way, go way back here. They don't believe in the Holy Ghost or nothing. Some of them come up and say, well, I don't believe in a good sanctified life, but I, I, I just don't believe in divine healing. But others will get right down almost to the borderline, but they're afraid of the scarecrow. And that's just about where Pentecost has come now. You're afraid of the scarecrow. My brother, a scarecrow's a meal ticket. <laughs> Amen. 
Just get in behind the scarecrow. That's all you have. And the 